Hi guys, I'm just doing um generating some image, automatically generating some images in Photoshop at the moment, and I just thought I'd record a quick video just to show everyone how to do it, just in case you've never come across this feature because it is it is really useful. I I find I use it quite often. It typically works best, I think, for web sort of graphics as opposed to sort of large photography images. I think it probably won't work. I don't really think it's even aimed at that to be honest. But I mean, you could use it, but. It just churns a bit if you've got a lot to do. I mean, it's all right, like I say, for smaller web graphics, but I think if you were doing it for large images, it probably won't work quite as well. So just sort of bear that in mind. Um, but it's just this feature of going to the file menu and checking off this generate image assets. Now, before you do that, and what it'll do with then Photoshop will just generate some images based on whatever parameters you've put in your layers panel. So I've named my images uh, texture iPhone gold iPhone A dot JPEG. Now the important thing there is the the dot JPEG. I could have also used .png and I could have also used .gif and then the second um, image down here, or the second layer, I've called texture gold b.jpg. So now when I go to file generate image assets and if you just go back up there you'll see it's got a little uh, tick next to it. So if I save this file now, it's just a regular PSD and then come into the um, folder which it's located in which is on my desktop in a folder called test. Now, whatever your PSD files call, which in my case, mine's called test.psd, um, it creates a folder just with a fo with a file name, hyphen, and then assets. And if I come in here, look, you'll see that it's created, automatically generated these two JPEGs for me, which is really handy. I mean, obviously, when you've just got two like that, it's not really showing its full potential, but I mean, I'm just working on a file here at the moment. You can see it's got literally hundreds of files in it. I mean, don't get me wrong. You still have to go around. You still have to go through it, naming the files. But it's still pretty damn. You know, it's still miles quicker than saving them all out. So I just thought I'd show you. So, like I say, you can do JPEG, PNG, or GIF, and then you can also add things like the quality setting. So after the JPEG, you know, you can do things like eighty, and then percent return, and then obviously that would give me a JPEG then at eighty percent. Um, so, like I say, it, it is really handy. I mean, there's a few other things that you can do. Um, if you go onto the Adobe's website, I'll put this link in the description. There's there's a few other things you can do. You can set like um, image uh, sizes and things, uh, what folder you want it to be in. You know, if you wanted it to be in like a subfolder, um, I think you can even do. Well, it looks like you can like do two times as well. You know, so if you wanted to do like a an higher DPI version of a, an image, for, for say if you're working on a website and you were supporting high definition displays, you know, so you might have your regular image and then one that's sort of two times. So there's quite a few different things that you can do with it. It's, it's quite impressive, I think, and it's it's really handy. It's just when you've got an awful lot of images like this, it just saves you the you know having to fart around exporting every single one. And to be honest, if you export for the web out of um, Photoshop, it doesn't always do that brilliant of a job anyway. So you, I sometimes have to run it through a, a second thing, a second piece of software to compress the images anyway. So. It's just an handy trick that, so I just thought I'd record a quick video just in case anyone else hasn't seen that because it is quite handy. Okay, cheers guys, thank you, bye.